Hey all, this is part seven, and we're gonna introduce a keyword called continue. So continue is a way for us to stop the current iteration, but not the entire loop. So the loop is the for loop, an iteration is one instance of that loop, at least that's what we're gonna call it. And so what we mean is that the continue keyword, if put in a section of code that is going to run, will jump to the next iteration of the loop. So here's an example of this, and to be honest, uh, this is one of those where there are ways to do this without using continue, and the same thing for the next one. There are ways to do it without using the break statement, which is what we'll talk about in the next. Um, is it a continue statement or a keyword? I think it's I think it's statement. I usually call it keyword, but I looked it up on MDN, and it turns out that it's a statement. So there you go. Let's go ahead and paste this in here. So we do not want to print out the in the element at index two. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say for variable i is equal to zero, same idea, iterating over the entire length of the nums array, and then if i is equal to two, we're gonna say skipped value at index two, and we're just gonna say continue, uh, which tells it to go to the next iteration. Now the reason that this is kind of like a contrived example, see there it says skipped uh, value at index two, is we could definitely just say else here. If we had an else statement and we wrap this all around that, uh, let's say, and then we got rid of the continue statement, uh, the same exact thing is going to happen. So this, again, is less about showing you the only way that you can do this, and it's much more about showing you uh, what a continue statement is, because you might see them in play, or you might come up with a reason why you'd want to use one, and this is what it is, and that's how it works. So let's talk about some restaurants. And we've identified by some capacity that the error is at index two. So if we get to i is equal to index two, or if the index is equal to two, we're gonna use our continue statement, which will move it to the next uh, iteration of the loop. And we're gonna log restaurants at i to the console in all the other cases. So there we go. So now we're gonna complete a function that takes two parameters, an array of elements and an index, and logs every element except for the element at the input index to the console. Your function should use a loop to log every element except one at the inputted index, and should also use a continue statement. Must use a semicolon after continue for test to pass. That's important because it'll break if you don't. To skip over the value at the inputted index, then return nothing. Your code should not use else. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you have just done the described function correctly. So let's copy our function stub. And let's copy these. So create a loop which iterates over the input array. I'm going to say a for loop. i is equal to 0. i is going to be less than the length of the array. I'm going to increment i each time. I'm going to wrap all of this. Oh, boy around. So if the current index, so current index is going to be i, is equal to the input index, index, then I want to use the describe statement to skip to the next one. And the reason I say that is because the way the tests work is it actually is going to parse through your function and see if it finds um, literally the words continue semicolon. So it turns out that you don't actually need to have the continue statement running. It could just be in there, like as part of the comments. And it turns out that if I put it in the comments, it passes automatically. So with that in mind, we're going to do it this way. And again, it's more about describing this is what a continue statement does, rather than this is some super useful case where continue is the only thing that you can use. Ray at i is where we're logging to the console in all of our cases. So if we run this, it should get acd124. Excellent. So let's take this function back to the input window, find out what kind of shape we are in, and the shape we are in is good. Excellent work. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.